Earth, the nation of Nabath, Arang once rose. When I journeyed here long ago, I spoke with a sun weathered elder. He told me Armarang meant majestic land in the language of his people. And so it might still be. Were it not for the Light's unrelenting onslaught.
Master Gengen. This is the friend of the Exarch I was telling you about. Very good, very good. Though friend or no, all are welcome in Mordsk. Souk is Mordish for city. As things stand, this souk boasts the largest and busiest marketplace in all Armoureng. You'll find ore from the mines here, of course, but all manner of other things, too. Many of them rare. As I told you before, not many visit Armoureng by choice, but Maud Souk's a different story. Merchants come from miles around to purchase the relics the Maud dig up. Aye, that they do, for Maud do not dismiss the spoils of the earth. We clean them and polish them and reveal to the world their true value. That is why they come here, come from far away, come with much money. And so our soup is always busy, busy, busy. No such thing as a thing no one needs. You say that every time, Master Gengen. Uh, some sort of family motto, wasn't it? Or perhaps a Maud philosophy, for which we should all be very grateful. Would that everyone was so willing to take in refugees, regardless of race or creed. Now then, if you intend to spend any time here, you'll want to gain the trust of the locals. And there's a little custom all newcomers are expected to observe. The cracking of the coin purse. You buy one thing from the market. Price can be low or high, just as long as you buy. As the good Maud says. In fact, the Exarch sent a little something to cover this very expense. A Verbert gold piece, no less. The first I've held in years. Verbert gold? Real Verbert gold? <laughs> Here, newcomer, crack your coin purse with me. Oh no, you want my goods, newcomer? I have jars and pots, all smooth and shiny. Over here! Come and look! You buy, you buy? <laughs> Enough of that! Calm, I say! This one must still journey through the barrel. Nothing bulky, nothing heavy, no pots. Nothing better for the road than a full belly. Spend that piece at Ron Ron's place, yes? Eat for three before you leave.
It can't be. I had it under control, right up until the moment I didn't. I'll do better next time. I knew you'd turn up sooner or later, but I had been hoping for sooner. How are you? fought them to a standstill then. The Exarch did say that the Empire seemed to have drawn back when he last looked in on the Source. But without knowing for sure how fast time was passing there, I couldn't help worrying that a lot might have happened since then. I'm heartily relieved to hear that it hasn't, just as Alphano must have been. As you can imagine, both he and Arianger were desperate to hear the news from home when I arrived. I haven't actually seen Thancred and Yishtola yet, but they will have heard all the latest developments from the Exarch by now, or should have at least. When I think of how frantic Tataru and the others must be, I want nothing more than to rush back and reassure them. But we still haven't found a way to reverse the summoning, and even if we had, we couldn't just ignore Uriolje's vision. He may use ten words where one would suffice, and they may often obscure as much as they reveal. But on this matter, he was as clear as day. I do not doubt for one moment that he saw what he claims. Nor how difficult it must have been to speak about them. The Eighth Umbral Calamity and your death aren't exactly topics for idle conversation. As much as I might want to go home, I don't want to go home to that. We can't allow the rejoining to happen, which means we have to save the first from the Sin Eaters. That great wall of white is a remnant of the Flood. A hundred years ago, the balance in the first tipped decisively in favour of light. From that moment, it rose and swelled with each passing day and then, without warning, it burst forth like water from a broken dam. A colossal wave of pure light, drowning everything in its wake. Only Norvrant was spared. For the most part, living things are composed of ether of various different aspects. But when exposed to such a flood, their etheric harmony is shattered and their natural form breaks down. Then they either perish, or are warped into mindless abominations. Yes, that's how the Sin Eaters came to be. They were once living creatures, or people, that were caught in the path of the Flood. Once the change is wrought, there is no going back. In that instant, they are gripped by an insatiable appetite for ether and will happily gorge themselves on any living thing within reach. But even that is not the worst of it. The stronger Sin Eaters can plant light in us, like seeds in soil, corrupting our ether and triggering the birth of new monstrosities. They are creatures of base instinct that exist only to feed and to multiply. They feel no pity, know no remorse, and are utterly deaf to reason. Which is why they must be destroyed. Every last one of them. The infirmary is full of the Sin Eater's victims. 
left here to spend their final hours waiting for the change to overtake them.